Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for coming to my channel. I appreciate you taking the time to visit. Um, it really helps the YouTube's algorithm to find my channel and promote it if you'd hit the like button before you leave today. Um, I also It also helps if you leave a comment in the comment section down below. And I love to hear what you guys have to think about things or if you have questions about what I, uh, what I was doing. So leave a comment for me. Hit the like button. I'd love to have you do that. Today I thought uh, I occasionally make some kind of uh, open-ended wraparound rings that uh, circle your finger once or twice. Uh, and so I thought I'd do three different designs of those because uh, uh, they're simple to make and kind of fun. And they're also, uh, at least two of these are relatively adjustable. So um, one, the first one is just going to have a faceted stone set in an open back bezel, a little step bezel that I make and it's going to have some 14 gauge square wire uh, spiraling around off of it. The second one I make is going to look like a snake, or at least as close to a snake as I can get it, but it's not going to have a stone. And the third one uh, I'm going to do is uh, going to be a piece of 18 gauge sheet that I cut into some interesting shapes and, and do some cutouts in it and stuff, and then mount a bezel on the curved surface after I make it into a, a ring. So. Uh, before we do that, though, I needed to thank all of my uh, supporters. My uh, YouTube subscribers have recently passed uh, 5,800, which is great. Thank you guys all for subscribing. Please feel free to share my channel's information with friends or other people you think might be interested. I'd love to get that high, uh, number even higher. Uh, but thank you for your support, both financially and uh, for all the nice things that you say. So I really appreciate that stuff. I also wanted to thank my patrons over on Patreon, a uh, really nice group of people. They're paying for my premium content. There's a lot of fun stuff over there and a lot of nice people. So uh, I've learned so many things from them and I hope they're learning from me as well. So thank you guys, I appreciate that. All right, let's get started on these projects. So this is a design idea book that you can find on my merch store. Um, let me show you the stones I got for these. This one here is going to be the first one where it's just got a stone in a open back bezel uh, and then it's going to have a piece of 14 gauge wire that curves right into that and then just wraps around your finger a couple of times. So real basic and simple but kind of pretty. Second one's going to be a snake. At least I'm going to try to make it look like a snake. Um, no stones on this one but I'll probably use some. Um, I thought about using uh, just some plain half round wire here and then stamping it to get a kind of a, a scaly looking thing but I actually found in one of the pattern wires that I already have here and I, and I think you could do a pretty good job on that I played around a little bit and did some testing and I think I could have gotten something alright but I think this is just so perfect because it's got uh, it looks just like snake scales or something so I'm gonna go ahead and use this today but I'm gonna make the head out of something else I cut a piece of low dome half round that's a little bit wider so we'll solder that on and I'll probably pound it a little flat and then we'll do some uh, stamping and, and shaping to get, make that look like a snake's head a little bit more and then we'll shape it. Uh, finally I'm going to take a piece of 18 gauge sheet. I cut it off earlier so it's about the right length and I just kind of randomly drew a swirly pattern here and I thought I, for this one I was going to do a little piece of turquoise mounted on it. And I think this is going to wrap around and come up here on this side but I'll have to see. I, the geometry, or maybe this, <laughs> the geometry of it messes with my mind. It'll be on this side, I think. So, uh, but yeah, and then, oh, for this, uh, for the first one here is a little citrine that I picked for it. So, I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of an orangey citrine. I really like this batch that I have. I'm not sure where I got it from, but I've had it for a while. And that's, uh, let's see how big he is. It's about a six millimeter. And this, uh, this little turquoise here is a, let's see. It's about an eight by six, probably. Eight by six, I would call it. All right, but let's make a, a little step bezel for the citrine first. And here's a piece of square wire. I, cut, I think I cut this at about five and a half inches, and that's where we'll start after we make our little bezel. Set that off to the side for now. I'm going to use a three sixteenths inch fine silver bezel strip. And somebody asked me just the other day in a comment why I use fine silver. 
fine silver is much more malleable than sterling silver and so when you have to force it over the uh, edge of a stone or something uh, sterling silver is really hard to do that with in any kind of thickness and so you almost need a hammer setting tool uh, to do that kind of thing so fine silver makes for good bezels for me anyway okay so I'm just going to flatten it in here this is 26 gauge so it's a little on the thicker side and I use this for most things anymore when you're doing a bezel for a faceted stone, it's easiest to put it on a table facet if it has one, because it sits flatter then. Then I can just kind of like. get this shaped. I'm just going to try and get that as snug as I can around there. Scratch a little mark. I find it useful to make uh, bezels into an angular shape before I solder them in order to get the ends lined up nicely. If you've never seen one of my videos before, I use uh, hard silver sheet solder for almost everything, with the very few uh, exceptions. Uh, but generally, for most normal stuff, I'm using hard silver sheet solder. I also use a spray-on flux rather than painting it on like some people. I happen to have a little piece of solder on the pad here already, right here. Toss them on top. If you'd like to see a video about making bezels, I'll put a link up there for you. I'm just going to reshape this. With faceted stones uh, in bezels, I usually recommend people make a few uh, bezels for cabochons. Well, quite a few actually before you try and do a faceted stone bezel. With faceted stone bezels, we're going to be creating a platform uh, for the pavilion of the stone to, to rest through, kind of. And you can do it in a whole bunch of different ways. You can even buy a pre-made step bezel if you want to, which has a lip on the inside for the, for the stone to sit on, kind of. I find it's pretty easy just to make my own. And I, I do it with... Uh, I just stack two jump rings on the inside of each of these most most times. Okay, that's a pretty good size. So, to make those little jump rings I'm going to put on the inside, I'm going to use a little bit of 18 gauge wire. You can use a, a, a jump ring mandrel or whatever you like to make these. I just usually hand shape them really quick. cross them over like that then you can gradually make them bigger or smaller to to get them to be where they'll just fit right inside of there all right that looks pretty good you could do this kind of ring with a little cabochon too it doesn't have to be a faceted stone I have to think about what I'm making for my patreon uh, every month I give them a, a prompt uh, to make a piece of jewelry based up on and this month it was uh, the kitchen so it could be food it could be utensils it could be whatever I have to figure out what I'm gonna do I have an idea I'm not sure if I can pull it off or not <laughs> we'll see that'll probably be my Saturday's video this week I'm gonna make sure they're sitting flat in there what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little pile of solder right here, three or four pieces. So I'm going to try and find a little bit flatter spot. So I'm going to flux this and then set it right on top of those pieces of solder and then heat it from the outside like you would any bezel and it should just draw it up in there.
gonna set right there. Make sure you get complete flow there. of want this to attach to the side of this thing uh, at a slight angle and so I'm gonna have to position it that way when I solder this on and so I may use a magnesia block to angle it a little bit so I can push this downwards at a slant but before we do that I want to actually curve this a little bit so it kind of matches the curve of the, the thing so I'm gonna file the end flat to start with Bill making pliers to get a kind of a curve started on it. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to pick up a little of this. Stuff. You'll notice in uh, throughout the video I use pick soldering a lot. That's where you pick up a little bit of solder on the end of one of these picks, and then you can place it real precisely where you want it to. And I find that that's one of the skills that bump me up from an amateur to someone who's a little more than an amateur so you might consider checking out this video that's a good skill to learn if you want to speed things up especially this ring is concerned other than setting the stone and you know doing cleanup and shaping it that's done so it's soldered on there at a slight slant downwards so it should sit okay on the top of your finger and then we'll wrap it a couple of times so into the pickle you go and we can start the next one okay remember I said for the snake one I was going to use this pre-made pattern wire but I wanted to show you my experiment with uh, stamps. This came out looking pretty good too, I think. And what I did was I just took the X letter off my letter stamps and I stamped a bunch of X's along here. And then I used this background texture stamp which just has little dots basically in a kind of a, a crisscross pattern and stamped that over the top of it and along the sides. And that looks like a pretty convincing snake to me. So I think if I didn't have this that looks great, I probably would have gone with this. So you could try that as well. When you oxidize it too, the high points are going to shine up and the low points will stay dark, so it'll look pretty snaky, I think. So, But we're going we're gonna to do this one today. Maybe another time we'll try that to make some of the kind of snake thing and use that. Um, for the head, I cut myself a piece of this low dome half round. I think it's number four. I'll have to double check. But and what I'm going to do, I'm going to sweat some uh, onto the, the back end of this, this one that I filed flat here, some solder, and flux this, and then I'm just going to butt them up against each other. And then I'm going to shape this into a head, and I'm going to shape this into a little narrower neck, and then taper this gradually to a tail, and then we'll start shaping it and doing stuff with the head to make it look more like a snake. I think I can make a snake head, we'll see. <laughs> so let's sweat a little solder on there first with the idea that I don't want to get a lot of excess flow into the pattern here.
first, I'm going to spend some time. Like I said, I'm going to file this neck so it goes inwards just a little tiny bit, and then gradually tapers into a thicker body. And back here, I'm going to gradually taper this into a tail. So I'm just going to be filing for a while, so I'm not going to make you watch me do that. I'm just going to continue doing this, mostly. So, let's be right back. I just did a kind of a gradual taper back into this, so it's narrower here like the neck of a snake. And then I tapered it down gradually to this point at the end, which I didn't leave super pointy because I don't want it to be stabby. But uh, now I have to shape this head a little bit. I tapered the back end of it downwards a little bit, but I'm going to have to now, I'm going to make it kind of a wedge shape and then round it a bit because it's, snake heads are kind of like this basic idea, right? So I'm going to kind of file this to a sort of a pointy end. Backside here needs to taper back in. If you look at a, a snake's head, it kind of like tapers down on either side like this. There'll be an eye here and an eye here. So I think I'm going to try and do that with the file. Actually, I might use the Dremel on this. And what I'll do is I'll just make that like taper down like that. You could use your file and just do it, but I'm going to do it a little quicker with the Dremel probably. Be right back. All right, I wanted to connect this, uh, some of the patterns on the head that I'm going to create with the pattern in the, in the uh, body. I'm going to use a little uh, a diamond burr. You can get these off of Amazon, a set of them for like 14 bucks, I think. So we'll see if I'm any good at doing this. I'm not usually very good at this kind of stuff, so we'll see. <laughs>
but I, I need to make these little bends now where it kind of wavers a little bit at the tail and at the head and so I'm going to use my uh, disc cutter as kind of a rudimentary bending jig so you can use it to get leverage probably going to have to do the end one by hand here a little bit get a little curve in it but the rest of these I can probably use the leverage from it to get kind of a curve going. It's going to try and twist on you still. or something similar anyway. We just need to wrap it around the manual after it pickles for a while. I think I'm going to oxidize this one so it shows up nicely. But, uh, yeah. we'll throw that one in the pickle for a while. Okay, third. <clears throat> oh, I guess I've got to make a bezel for this. So let's make a bezel for this little turquoise next. We're using the same kind of bezel as before, except for this one we're not going to do a step bezel, we're just going to put a bottom on it. Well, actually, we're not going to put a bottom on this one, we're going to solder it right to the band. And in order to do that, we're going to make the band into a ring shape first, and then we're going to carve the bottom into a curve to match that, so that it doesn't end up having a big flat spot underneath it. We're good on size. So I'm going to set that to the side for a minute while we work on this designed piece. We'll have to do some cutting on. So try and get it as flat as we can. This is 18 gauge sterling sheet. I think I'm going to cover it with masking tape and then sketch out my design on it. So let me find my masking tape. Okay, I think the let's go over and saw some of this stuff. Right. 
So I drilled some holes in the little open spaces so I can feed my saw through it. I think I'm using a number one. I'm not 100% sure. I did a little bit of filing to clean this up, but I think we can probably get it around the mandrel here. I'm going to round this part out. So, I go to put this on here, I need to put this stone right there. But in order for that to happen, I need to curve the bottom of the bezel a little bit. So I'm just going to take the Dremel and, and curve the bottom just slightly with the, one of those abrasive white wheels. So I'll be right back. Okay, so you can see I've kind of curved the bottom of this to match the curve here like this. So I should be able to set it on there and solder it down. I'll try and get it relatively centered in that space. All right, there should be enough solder in there, I think. So let's flux that and get that soldered on. sure that's touching the sides. I want to make sure you get a seam all the way around. Okay. So I'm going to let that pickle. That's a pretty big ring. I may cut it down a little bit just to make it a little simpler. Maybe taper this over that way or something so it's not quite as long. But uh, either way, we're done soldering, so I'm going to throw it in the pickle and then we'll call it a day until we set the stones to polish. apologize if I have polishing hair. <laughs> um, so if you want to see how to set stones, just about any of my other videos that aren't the three project ones will have them. So um, I'll put an example of one up here that has how to set uh, bezel set faceted stones. And then I'll put another one up here for just bezel setting a regular stone. So, um, But here's the three things that I uh, finished. So here's the citrine one. That came out pretty. 
There's the little snake one. Still trying to decide whether I want to oxidize them or not. And then this is the abstract one with the turquoise on it. So, all right, I'll take some better pictures of those and put them at the end of the video. <clears throat> okay, well that was the three uh, wraparound rings. I'm not sure what we're gonna call this video, but uh, I can foresee doing a second video about these kind of things in the future because there's so many options possible. And so maybe this will be a part one, we'll see. Uh, if you did enjoy the content, please make sure to hit the like button before you leave, and I'd love to have you leave a comment. That helps out a lot, as well as tells me what you guys like and what you don't like. So, thanks for that. Um, take a moment before you leave also to uh, check out some other videos. I have over 200 here. I'm putting out three per week, uh, one on Tuesday, one on Thursday, and one on Saturday generally. Um, so there's tons of content here, especially if you're a beginner, but also if you're more advanced, there's lots of idea stimulating sorts of videos. Uh, so peruse them and subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you. Um, check out the video description for some various relevant links, including my Patreon, my merch store, uh, and uh, there's even a, a link to buy me a coffee if you feel like just kind of giving me a tip. So thanks for that in advance. Uh, you guys take care. Happy silversmithing.